Hey guys, welcome back to electronicsinnovation.com. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to make an IoT based COVID patient production monitor which is capable of sending critical medical alerts to the hospital management and nearby ambulance driver. As the corona second wave has started and it is spreading across the world very rapidly, it is always important to take the precautionary measures before it got worse. If a person infected by corona, firstly it will affect on the respiratory system which causes breathing problem. If a person having breathing problem, mainly the blood oxygen levels goes down. That's why it is important to monitor the blood oxygen levels of covid patients. When the blood oxygen levels become low, the patients required to be placed on the mechanical ventilator. For those patients, ventilators can be difference between life and death. So, if a person needs ventilation, the nearby hospital or nearby ambulance should get alert about it so that they can take necessary actions. But the oximeters which are available on the internet doesn't have such feature. So, I have decided to make an IoT based COVID patient production monitor which is capable of sending critical medical alerts to the desired people based on the oxygen levels. This device continuously monitors blood oxygen levels of the COVID patient and logs them into the UbiDots platform. And also it will send critical medical alerts in the form of voice call, email, SMS, telegram message to the nearby hospital management or nearby ambulance driver for seeking help in hard times. So let's see how we can do this. This project exclusively sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is one-stop solution for PCB prototyping, manufacturing and PCB assembly. Along with PCB prototype, PCBWay is also making assembly stencil within one day production time. If you are using assembly components on your PCB, you should have this assembly stencil. You can get it easily from PCBWay.com. Just choose stencil type, size, stencil side and quantity. Then click on quote now. Check other advanced parameters here, then calculate. You can get it at $15 which is the best price in the current industry. Select the shipment method and complete the order. Required components are breadboard, ESP32 module, MAX3010 pulse oximeter sensor, 4.7 kilo ohm resistors, and some connecting wires. Here is the circuit diagram for IoT based COVID patient production monitor with ESP32. Connect the MAX3010 sensor with ESP32 and add two pull up resistors to the SDA and SCL data lines of the sensors as shown in the circuit diagram. After all connections, the circuit might be something like this. Let's create a device in the UbiDots platform for our solution. Visit ubidots.com, go to dashboard, click on devices, create a new device, select a blank device, enter the name for the device and then click on the green tick mark to create the device. That's it, the device successfully created. Let's move to the programming part. Here is the code for IoT based COVID patient production monitor with ESP32. This code will be available on the project page which is mentioned in the description below. As we are using ESP32 module, we should have the ESP32 add-on installed in our Arduino IDE. If you don't know how to install it, you can follow the above video. Before compiling or uploading, make sure you have installed these two libraries. To make this code work with your ESP32, you have to enter these three parameters. Enter SSID and password to give access to the internet. Then enter unit ubidots token. This can be found on the ubidots account API credentials. Now this code is ready to upload to the ESP32. Upload this code to the ESP32 and open the serial monitor. On the serial monitor, we can see our ESP32 successfully connected to the programmed Wi-Fi and allocated with an IP address. Then initiated MQTT connection with UbiDots Cloud and connected to it. Then it started publishing heart rate and percentage of SpO2 data to the UbiDots platform. Gently place your finger on the oximeter. Now you can see the live data on the serial monitor. Do not press your finger hardly. That will give you false data. 
Now go to the UV dots and reload it. You can see the last activity in few seconds, which means our pulse oximeter is communicating with UV dots. The best part of the UV dots is if it receives the data from any module, it will automatically create those variables and start storing data for us. Here you can see the same variables are created automatically. Currently, we are receiving and storing the data on the UV dots. Now let's visualize the same data. For that, choose dashboard from the data drop down menu. Click on add new widget. You will be prompted with bunch of data visualization options. Choose one among them. I will use a, a metric to display the heart rate. Click on add variables. Then select the device oximeter. And then select the variable heart rate. Add a name for the metric. Keep the rest of the options default. Later create it. After creating, you can see the live data on the dashboard. Now let's repeat the same process for SPO2. For SPO2, I would like to choose the Gaze option to visualize it. For SPO2, I would like to add color logic to differentiate the safe or critical blood oxygen levels. If the blood oxygen levels are 95% or above, they are said to be safe. Below 95% are critical. So I will select green color if the oxygen levels are greater than 95% and red color if the oxygen levels are lesser than 95%. Then click on accept. After creating, you can see the live data in the green color on the gauge because it is greater than 95%. If that value is less than 95%, you can see that in the red color. To demonstrate, I am moving the finger to create fake abnormality in the readings. So it perfectly worked. You can see the data in red color. Now let's move to the most important part of the episode, sending alerts when abnormal production levels notice it. UBDOT supports integrated events to allow us to send alerts and notification to the hospital management and the caretaker of the patient whenever the blood oxygen levels goes down. Go to the events from the data drop down. As you can see here, there is an event already created. I have created this event for a similar project with ESP8266 module. I am going to use the same event for this project because there is no change in the event. You can follow the above i button if you wish to know how to create this event. I have clearly explained each and every step in that episode. For now, I will explain what exactly this event will do. This event will trigger if the oxygen monitor devices SPO2 value is less than or equals to 95% for 1 minute. Then it will send an alert email to askus.electronicsinnovation at the red gmail.com. Also it will send SMS and telegram message to the configured mobile number. It is also capable of making a call to the desired people on low blood oxygen levels. We can use this feature to alert ambulance drivers. As we wanted to monitor the patient 24 by 7, appropriate configurations were done here. Let's enable this event. Now everything is configured to get an alert whenever the SPO2 value is less than or equal to 95% for 1 minute. And also we will receive another alert message whenever the values back to normal. Let's test this feature now. Here the data is being updated seamlessly. To make this SPO to less than 95%, I'm gonna remove the finger from the top of the sensor. So it will send zero reading which will satisfy the event condition. Let's wait for one minute to get the event alerts. Yes! After one minute, we have received a voice call from UB Dots. Let's lift it and listen to the message. Hey there, patient. John's blood oxygen percent SPO2 was 0.0, .0 at February 16, 2021, 13, 18 and 49 seconds plus 0530 for one minute. 
please take necessary actions as soon as possible. That was amazing. Oh, what about SMS? Yeah, yeah, we have also received the SMS. You can read the text which is as same as the configured. We also received telegram message from IoT notification. Maybe this IoT notification is the board created by UbiDots. Anyway, we have received the telegram alert. Let's check the mail now. Mail also received from notification UbiDots with the subject and mail body we have configured on the event. So all four alerts were triggered and sent to the configured receiver. For demonstration, I have provided my personal mobile number. For real-time scenarios, we can simply replace my number with hospital management, patient caretakers or patient cloud ones who need to know whenever the oxygen levels are go down. We can see the log of the event at the event log option. If there is any problem with the mobile number or email, the alert cannot be delivered. So you never receive an alert. In that case, you can check here. If there is any problem, a detailed description of the problem can be found here. It will help us in debugging. So all these alerts are triggered when SPO2 value is less than or equals to 95% for one minute. Now it's time to test the back to normal alert feature. To make this SPO2 greater than 95%, I am gonna place my finger on top of the sensor. So it will send the exact readings of my body which will satisfy the event condition to trigger back to normal alert. Yes, after one minute, we have received a voice call from UbiDots again. Let's lift it and listen to the back to normal message. We are happy to let you know that John's blood oxygen name, SPO2, ID 6025010973 EFC 33726CC6B03, properties, last underscore value, 96.0, timestamp. 1613461770845 last underscore value underscore context SPO2 back to normal thank you for the support Jing Zing amazing I fall in love with this feature likewise we have received SMS alert and telegram message alert from IoT notification also, we have received the mail from notification UB dots with the subject and mail body we have configured on back to normal event. That's all about developing an IoT based COVID patient production monitor with ESP32 and sending critical medical alerts to the hospital management or nearby ambulance driver. Currently, I am working on designing a PCB to make this device as compact as possible and easy to wear. I will give an update once it is completed. I hope you have learned something new from this episode. Stay tuned to Electronics Innovation for more interesting projects. See you on the next interesting episode. Bye bye.